Hi, Jeff. Zach, thanks for joining me. Good to see you, Steve. Thanks for having me. Good to have you guys. Um, news we're covering today is Washington, D.C. is thinking about, uh, and legislators, fixing the real estate market. Um, so there's new legislative proposals working their way through the system to crack down or limit the ability of Wall Street firms to buy up uh, houses and then use them as rentals. Um, a lot of companies um, bought single family homes uh, post COVID. And we're seeing with a housing shortage, a lot of pushback against that. Um, some, of, some of your thoughts on, uh, on the politicians fixing the, real, fixing the housing market. <laughs> they, they haven't really fixed anything. I mean, uh, them wanting to dabble in this makes me scared that it's going to get worse, not better. Um, right. You're looking at basically squelching capitalism. Um, you're not allowed to buy a house because you're a Wall Street firm. Well, if we didn't buy those houses, there would have been a major housing collapse over the last uh, three, four years. So it's a double-edged sword right there. A lot of people don't want to buy these houses. They, they don't want to own houses, but they, uh, they do want to rent. They have the money for rent. These houses would, would sit um, you know, destitute. They'd be dilapidated, falling down. Um, a lot of cities would suffer, especially with migration. So you know, the fixing to me sounds more like harming and who wants to be told, hey, start a business, go into capitalism, make a lot of money. Oh, except you're not allowed to. We're going to control what you can and can't do. That doesn't doesn't sound real capitalistic to me. So so the playing the devil's advocate here, what what the politicians, some of these politicians are saying is that these big Wall Street firms come in with a ton of cash. They're cash only buyers. They're willing to pay top price. And 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 they're they're pushing that struggling family out of uh, the ability to buy the house of their dreams. Um, you know, <laughs> Jeff, you, you, your thoughts on Goliath crushing uh, crushing David? Um, um, and and kind of that like I, I, I I probably um, you know I, I I probably sit on the same sideline as what what Zach said. You know I I I feel like you're probably going to have more of a Supreme Court case in this, you know, telling somebody they can or cannot buy a house. Um, in whatever market, I mean, it's 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 kind of reverse redlining, um, you know, for for whatever reason. I mean, maybe maybe you have a case for some sort of antitrust. I, I don't know. Um, I'm not a, I'm not a legal expert, but I just I can't see this going forward. This is just a ploy for you know for a uh, a November election. Well, I'll agree yeah, I'll, that I'll... I think it's not fair. There is a there is a sense of fairness, right? Um, in business, nothing is fair. So let's just take that off the table. More times than not, uh, right. unfair things have happened to me and other people. I get that. It isn't fair that they can come in and kind of dictate or control this. But to level the playing field, it shouldn't be censorship. Um, create better incentives or opportunities only exclusive to human individuals buying houses, especially first-time house buyers. Yeah. Don't punish the corporations. First-time house buyers get in a 3% interest rate. Well, it's right? a slippery slope. I mean... You know anybody that it's not an individual is 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 now a, a, a potential problem for for everything because you could transition that to multifamily you could transition that away from Airbnbs. trust from anything yeah so there's a lot of other avenues available that government could use from interest rates assisting with uh, down payments and deposits and otherwise that would then make uh competition more fair but i don't think that it, you know Cutting a company out is is the answer. I don't think it's going to help anything. I don't think it'll change anything. Yeah, and I, I would just throw in my uh, two cents in here. Uh, the institutional players are a relatively small part of this market, right? I mean, some estimates are just three to five percent. Uh, I, I think by far and away, the biggest source of um, unaffordable housing is politicians, right? I mean, you know, try um, spending less money than you have. And maybe you won't be driving inflation and interest rates so so much with high deficit spending. Um, maybe took a look at the regulations you're imposing on making it so hard to build and so expensive to build. Um, maybe look at you know not just the regulatory but the legal framework you've created around a lot of this. Um, you know my my personal feeling is it's it's a way for politicians to get the spotlight off where the problem is, and the problem is largely them. Um, <laughs> well, you're not you're not rolling back prices. I mean, prices go up, then they go flat, then they go up, they go flat. They don't they don't go down. So the cost of construction and everything else, you're not putting that genie back in the bottle and making it cheaper. 
fortunately you kind of create your uh, self-fulfilling loop that we've kind of talked about in other videos but your way to fix your way out of that is to subsidize the construction costs to remove some of the red tape to create better policy that encourages more supply that encourages competition from the individual that supports them being able to get into the mix of their hat in the ring um, and builders being able to develop that product. You know, if we're taxing everything that's coming into the country, if we're creating backlogs, of, you know, construction is $800 a foot, we're selling a house for a thousand a foot. There's no way well, around it. I, I mean, take take it one step further. You, you, you had Dodd-Frank, which made it harder for people to, to acquire houses. And then now you, you still have antiquated 50s, 60s, 70s uh, FHA products that that do almost nothing for the home buyers. There's no yeah. in, you know real incentive other than you can put two and a, you know three percent or three and a half percent down. Yet you know you get VA loans, USDA loans uh, that give you 100 to 103 percent financing options. There are um, programs like that available, right? I yeah, mean, there are. HUD. We would love to use HUD. HUD is almost impossible to get those loans. Uh, USDA, that's a great example because it's not just farmland. There's a lot of other opportunities right. for USDA loans, uh, FHA loans. I mean, you have the tools and, you know, politicians, a challenge to politicians, and I'm talking to you guys, is make those programs available, make them able to be used by people. You know, it's not a 12 to 18 month process to get that kind of a loan. You make that a 30 day process like a traditional mortgage, there's still three, four, five percent interest rate products out there. People would be able to buy these homes. You wouldn't worry about these companies. That's right. Okay. Hey, um, let us know in the comments. You think Wall Street's to blame? You think the politicians are to blame? Um, what do you think about thoughts on fixing this? Does capitalism need to be uh, re-engineered a little bit here? Anyhow, um, you know, give us some comments. Give us a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe if you haven't. And uh, check out our uh, website, Select FinCap, and uh, let us know you're out there so we can uh, let you know about some exclusive deals we're looking at. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Steve. Thanks.